Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for clients all around the world. If you're interested in classes or commissioning me, look in the description area down below and you'll find links to all the information you're looking for. You will also find links to all the products, tools, and everything I'm using here today to cre create this finish as you see it here. Today I'm working with Mia Dead as the manufacturer. The product's called Stucco Lamundo. This is their lime based gloss plaster Venetian, sometimes referred to as a Grisello. So before we get started, if you don't mind, go down and hit that subscribe button. You'll get notified when new videos come out and hit the like button so I know that you like what I'm up to. Now let's get our tools, let's get our materials and let's get started. So the first thing I've done to get ready for today's technique is base coated the surface using the Mia Dead Quartz Primer, okay? This quartz primer is interior exterior, cleans up with soap and water. And if you so choose, you could tint it with pigment and never paint. I would highly suggest if you have it, if you're gonna add pigment to it, have them do it for you when you call and place your order. I rolled this on using a three, in, three eighths inch nap roller, okay? Uh, the reason for that is we don't want to use a heavy textured roller or a heavy nap. The heavier the nap, the more texture it can leave. And believe it or not, that does make a big deal, especially on these high gloss polished plasters, because we want the smoothest surface we can get to begin with. That being said, after I rolled on the coat of the quartz primer, I did give it a quick sand with 150 grit paper. Okay, now where are we? The plaster for today is Stucco Lamundo. See that beautiful label? All right. Uh, this is Stucco Lamundo. It's their Venetian plaster. It's all lime based and it is a traditional polished lime plaster. Okay. Into your exterior tints with, uh, well, they'll tint it for you. That's the other thing about that. When you call and place your order, uh, they will tint it to any Sherwin-Williams or Benjamin Moore color, which is extremely helpful. They will also ship it to you untinted and you can tint it yourself. Just make sure you're using lime compatible pigments. And that's what I did because for this application, they sent me a bunch of samples and let me back up. I actually had the pleasure of going out and meeting with uh, the owner and f founder of the company, uh, Shlomi and his son, Oren, and spent a couple days out there learning all the product. I should say products and by out there I mean because I'm in Maryland they are out on the west coast and yeah I got to go out to California for a minute hang out super great guys and the products are amazing okay so Stucco Lamundo interior exterior cleans up with soap and water tints with pigment never paint they will tint it to match any Sherwin Williams or Benjamin Moore paint color out there and let's see for this we're going to need our Pavon spatula and trowel. I've tinted this for a particular one. I have a sample to make for a client and that's what I'm doing. So I thought I'd share it with you, but I've tinted it to look at this. Doesn't that look black? Now the thing about lime plasters is that when they dry, they don't dry the same as when they're wet. Okay. I'm just clean off my trowel. It's a little a little dirty. Somebody got a little lazy here earlier today and there we go. All right. Quartz primer is on. It's sanded. It's ready to go. We have our Stucco Lumundo. We're going to take and I'm right handed. So oh, look, still got some dirt on it. This is going to be fun for you to see. I'm going to put my trial in the top right hand corner and work down. Now, this is the traditional technique as taught to me by a friend who studied at the Verona Academy where he was a, he learned lime plasters. We work wet to dry, not dry to wet, meaning we put the plaster on here in this top left hand corner. We're going to cut it in. We're going to come across the top, come down the edge a little bit, and we're going to fill our field in. And as we come down and around or down across, we work organically. What happens is as we're working from wet to dry, we don't see a trial mark, meaning if we put this black plaster on this dry primer like that, we're going to leave a line and that line will be there and telegraphs through. And if you've watched anything else I've done on here or taken a class with me, you'll know the foundation is the most important part of the technique or the finish. 
smooth foundation, smooth finish. Sloppy, busy foundation, sloppy, busy finish. We want to keep it clean. The, the, the base coat, the foundation is just as important. It's the most important part of anything, like a house. Crooked foundation, crooked walls, crooked roof, house going to fall down. And we don't want that to happen. So let's take some plaster, get it on our trowel. We're not going to start with a lot, just a little bit. Like I said, I'm going to come across the top for a bit. And then I'm going to jump over here. That would be my cut in, for lack of a better term. Don't go all the way around the wall. You can cut it in. And there, see, wet to dry. Okay. Gather this up. Same thing, let's come down here. It's okay if some of the primer is showing through. Don't put it on too thick, because it could crack. It's always a possibility. We don't want that to happen. And that happens from drying too quickly or putting product on too thick. All right, let's get a little more here and just quick going. Give it some interest, all right? Don't just keep doing this. Oh, it, don't be so repetitive. This is a hand applied finish, all right? Make it beautiful, one of a kind. Hundred percent coverage. Top to bottom, or I should say ceiling to floor, corner to corner. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry 100% and you need to do the same thing. Do not rush these to dry. If you go over it too soon, your next coat could cause the first coat to reactivate and peel. So take your time, let it dry overnight, go get a cup of coffee or whatever it is, tea, and we'll be back in just a minute. Remember how I was saying how lime plasters dry lighter? Dry, still damp, wet. See the difference? That's why you have to make those dry samples. Now, when you order it from Miaded and they tint it for you, you know it's going to be right because they don't send it out without testing it first. But if you're doing it on your, on your own, make sure you do a dry sample. All right? Dry, humid, wet. See you in a minute. All right, we are dry. Ready to move on. Second coat, same as the first. Same material. Remember, we're doing the traditional polished lime technique to get started with. Uh-oh, dropped it. It happens. That's why I cover the floors. One, can you believe how nicely that covered such a dark color in one coat and now two coats? Look at that. Good plaster, good tools, and a pretty okay technique. Get you in there like that. And that's all she wrote. Not quite. So we'll let that firm up to burnish it. Now, burnishing. Um, to burn. In ancient times, they would take a torch, heat the plaster up, get in there and press it. Sometimes they would heat the trowel up, get a hot trowel, whoosh, go over it. You don't need to really do that a lot. You still can. There's still some damp areas. I know you're going, how in the world did it dry so quickly that I'm ready to burnish it? Hmm. 
it's a little too damp at the moment right there. So when you burnish, you're compressing the plaster. It's a little too wet right here. Let's let that sit for a minute. Light pressure. You don't have to murder it. When I see somebody out there and I hear this, plaster is too dry. They don't know how to work it properly. You don't need to crush it. You start putting that kind of pressure on a plaster, you're going to damage it. And I know everybody's like, well, how do you know when to burnish it? It is a dance. This is your partner. You have to be in tune with it. Practice, 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 and practice. Listen, I am not putting a lot of pressure on that. It's still a little damp over here. And now I know you're going, well, this is a sample board. Yeah, man, if this is a big wall, and I've got plenty of big walls in my portfolio to back up what I'm saying, Big walls are a lot easier. Sample boards are a pain because you want to tend to get in there too quickly. So just to give you an idea of where we're at so far. See the shine off the light? Watch this. We're just getting started. Look at that. Woo wee, I need to shave. All right. I'm going to let this dry a little bit more because I don't want to rush it because it's a sample. It's going to be wet or damp around the edges because the tape is thicker. So therefore my plaster is thicker. It's going to take a little bit longer to dry. So we're going to let this go for a minute. I'll be right back. All right, now she's completely ready. I'm not, well, she's not dry, but she's ready to burnish completely. So I'm just going to put my thumb here to hold the board to keep it from bouncing light pressure. So I'm probably about a 25, 30 degree angle on this trial at the moment. It's going to take some I'm only putting my fingers here because this hand has a slight issue and it hasn't healed up yet. I can't put a whole lot of pressure on it. Um, I dislocated my finger a while ago and it's taken its sweet time to get back to normal. All right. And all I'm doing every so often when you see me wipe my trowel off, it's to make sure that anything I'm grabbing that's loose off the edge doesn't get back in here and damage my plaster. Mm. It just glides across the surface. Now, don't let it dry completely. If you let it dry completely, it's going to be hard next to impossible to get that high gloss mirror sheen that you're looking for. Okay. They refer, in Europe, they refer to it when the plaster is in love, meaning when you first put the plaster on, it's wet. It's all sloppy. Ugh. It's like a couple high school kids. It's just a mess. Ah, when it's dry, it's no longer in love. It's kind of just not talking anymore at the moment. And it's just there. When it's in love, the humid state, 80 to 85% dry. There's still moisture in here. And you can tell that by touching it, it's cold. All right, so let's take a look at what we got here. Stucco Lamundo, all right? Look at that shine. Isn't that pretty? Sorry, I have to look off to the side so I can see what you're seeing. Yeah, this one's better. Oh, yeah, look at that. 
<laughs> oh, I know. You're like, something's different. I'm wearing an apron. Yes. All right. We're going to let this dry 100% and I'm going to show you hydro wax. So to wax this, if you so choose, this is water resistant, but it's not stain resistant. So the reason you would put wax on here is to protect it from staining. So if this is a kitchen or a bathroom, I would highly suggest sealing it or a high volume traffic area like a restaurant, common areas, public spaces. Um, it's going to do two things. It's going to protect it from staining and people want to touch it. Two, it's going to give it a higher level of sheen, but it has to be 100% dry. So let this dry overnight, come back. And the other way you can tell is when you walk in the next day, if you touch this and it feels cold, that means there's moisture still in the surface and it's not ready. So therefore, if you touch this and it's cold and you put the wax over top of it, you know what you just did? Sealed the wax, or the, I'm sorry, the wax seals the moisture inside the plaster and it can turn gray and cloudy. Don't want that. Okay, so we're going to let this dry, come back, wax it. See you in a bit. All right. Our Stucco Lomundo has dried overnight. We know it's dry because we touched it. It's not cold, but we're ready to wax it. So the wax, Ugh. you see that pretty label? Hydro wax, interior, exterior. I know it comes in quarts, gallons, and I believe it comes in five gallon pails. All right, nothing's been done to it. That's how it comes out of the can, see that? It's white and creamy in the bucket. Doesn't mean anything, it's gonna dry crystal clear. Fingers crossed anyway. All right, so I'm gonna take a little bit, put it on my trial, and I'm gonna trial it down. Do not put this on too thick. If you do, it can get cloudy because it's gonna trap itself, moisture in itself. Now, I'm just going to start with the basics because this is a new product for me and I don't want to get you all confused by telling you what I could do with these waxes, what I could do with the plaster. This is Stucco Mundo in its basic traditional application. Introducing you to it. This is going to be one of those where we're going to crawl, walk, run, and then blast off to the moon. I got a lot of hot product downstairs to play with and I'm gonna show you some really cool stuff. Put the lid back on it. This does need to dry 100% before you can do anything to it. How do you know when it's dry? By the time you finish the wall, come back and you touch it. And if it's not sticky, you know it's dry. Like right here, I can, look, I can see it's wet. So we'll let this set for a few minutes, come back and buff it out. See you in a bit. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. All right, the hydro wax is dry. Look, nothing on my hand. Well, that's not necessarily true, but it's not, there's no wax on my hand. So what I'm going to do now is take a lint-free, color-free rag and I want to fold it, all right? I want this nice smooth edge. I don't want this crinkly part. The crinkly part leaves lines. So you want it nice and smooth and flat and get in here and it's a light pressure. You see how it's polishing up already? Look how easy this polishes. You can use a mechanical buffer. I will do another video at a different time because there's a little bit more information involved in that. Just stick, stay tuned, it's okay. All right, look at that. Mm. Now, in the wax is interior, exterior. You can tint it with pigment. You can put mica in it. Oh boy. But for right now, this is all we're going to do. Simple, basic application that is absolutely 
timeless and gorgeous. Get rid of this blue tape. Dirty hands. I never get this dirty on a job. It's always making these samples that makes a mess. All right. Goodbye, tape. You're distracting. Put you back there for a minute. It's going to take and do a quick cleanup pass in case any crunch he's got on there from pulling that tape off. Watch, I'm gonna get a clean part of the rag, fairly clean. All right, see that? There. All right. Look at the shine on this. Unbelievable. Gorgeous. There you have it. Stucco Lamundo from Mia Dead. Traditional application, two coats. Okay. I will put links to all the products and tools in the description area below. You can also find information down there about contacting me for classes, as well as commissioning for projects. I do jobs all around the world for clients, residential, commercial, you name it. I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.